Questions for Shane. First one. Reports right of my demise were premature. That's my opening statement. Right here in front one. Tom D'Angelo, Palm Beach Post. Shane, did you feel like you were having a, a Mike Miller moment? <laughs> I, I had that thought. Uh, but honestly, I felt good last uh, last couple games, and I made a couple threes uh, last game, and, and and so I felt really confident tonight, and. Uh, I knew that our, our starters were going to be uh, pretty, pretty tired after game six. It was an emotionally and physically draining game. I only played 12 minutes, so I, I, felt, I felt great. Next one right in the middle. You know what? Joe. One. What's the first thing you're going to eat uh, <laughs> after, you, uh, after you leave this arena? Oh, uh, well, I, I, you know, tonight I'm going to uh, – <laughs> That's a sticky question. Um, tomorrow, uh, I hope my wife cooks me a nice, uh, nice ribeye. Uh, I'm looking forward to my ribeye tomorrow. Who's next? Tom in the middle. Tonight, we'll see. Tom Haberster, ESPN.com. I know you've never looked at numbers ever before, but did you know you were in one of the worst shooting slumps in postseason history? I think 20% at one point. And how good does it feel now that the numbers lied? Yeah, well... Uh, it feels really good, you know, and, and I've maintained uh, last year I had a horrific shooting slump to start the year last year, and um, my mantra was I'll, I'll regress to the mean, and I, and I believe in that. I, I knew that my uh, my shooting was not indicative of the numbers that I, that I put up last year, and uh, very similarly to this, this stretch right now, I knew I'm a better shooter than my numbers put up and uh, a lot goes into it um, I thought I had some open looks last two games and when I have open looks I, th I expect to make to make them and um, I did Israel Shane two questions one did, did the bank shot you hit uh, to start off the last game sort of feel like make you feel like hey you know my time is coming well the, the basketball god I believe in basketball gods and uh, I, I felt that they owed me big time I, I had a bunch of shots in San Antonio that went, went in and out and, uh, you know, so when that, when that banker went in, I said, you know what, they owe me. Uh, but it was uh, the, the start of a, a pretty good streak there. And just if you could just take us through, I mean, your defensive play there on Tim that at the end there where he, you know, had a shot to tie it and missed it and, you know, what you saw and what you think you did. Well, you know, I'm, I'm 215 pounds, 6'8". Um, obviously, I'm giving up major weight and height to Duncan. And so I was just praying that he missed it. Um, to be honest with you, I don't think I affected the shot that much. Uh, I was just trying to make him shoot over the top. And uh, that's a shot Tim Duncan usually makes eight out of ten times. And, uh, you know, for whatever reason, that shot didn't drop right then. And um, I'm, th I'm very thankful. But, uh, you know, it wasn't because of my defense. Just missed it. Chris, and then on the left, last two. Uh, Shane over here. Um, two questions. First one, just on LeBron in general, what does winning, becoming a multiple title winner do for his legacy when he hits outside shots like that? I mean, well, he's, well, hopefully he, people he's, will, he's unstoppable, isn't he? Hopefully people will leave him alone a little bit more now. Um, he, he takes a lot of heat. And, you know, I think undeservedly. Uh, he's the best player on the planet. And hopefully now with two titles, uh, he'll get more of the benefit of the doubt. Um, but, he, you know, he's the best. He's the best right now. And what can you say about the grit of Dwayne Wade going out there playing the way he did? Well, the you know, they, they, they try to bury Dwayne, um, but he kept uh, pushing open that coffin door. And that's, that's Dwayne Wade. You, you, you really can't define him by stats. Uh, he's a competitor. He's a fighter. And when it counts most, he'll be there. Last one back left. Yeah, what does playing um, being with LeBron James these past couple years teach you about the nature of pressure? Uh, yeah, I've always thought that the pressure is trying to feed your family, trying to, to make the mortgage. We, we play a game. We play basketball. And, uh, you know, I think LeBron would tell you the same thing. Uh, this is an amazing game. We've been blessed to, to be, in the, be a part of the NBA. Uh, but 
this is a game and uh, something we, f we feel very passionate about. Obviously, it's our, it's our, it's our livelihood. Um, but we're going to do what we can do to make, make our fans happy and win games. And that's, that's the bottom line. Thank you, Shane. Thank you, guys. Shane Battier, 6 of 19 from three-point range through the first six games of the 2013 NBA Finals. 6 of 8 from three-point range in Game 7. Bones, your former teammate with the Houston Rockets, arrived right on time for his team. Well, the thing that's awesome about Shane, 3D, you remember during the streak that Miami had during the season, mm -hmm. Shane was the guy reminding each of the guys on the Miami Heat roster about just enjoying the moment, not yep. looking ahead as to who's our opponent in the next three games, are we playing at home, are we on the road? Just soaking it in every time that they conquered somebody that they had played. Shane was the guy keeping the Miami Heat in the moment, doing the job for Eric Spolstra, which I'm sure Spo appreciated. Like, man, I, this is good. Shane's taking over for a little bit. Mm -hmm. But for Shane in a game seven to have his moment after reminding those guys of just how much it meant during the streak to stay in it, I'm really proud of him. I mean, he was great. Tonight he did have open looks. Uh, talking about the, the game before, sort of opening the door for him. He had great looks tonight, and most of them 3D. They were, they were going through the net, swish, no rim, great rotation on it, and provided a great spark for the Miami Heat that they needed. you got to have somebody with some punch off the bench. Shane provided that for them. For you young people at home, be ready, stay ready, because you never know when your number is called. And when you have enough shooters on the on your team like Mike Miller and Ray Allen and Shane Battier who's just waiting for his time, but knowing that, hey, I'm not playing a lot of minutes now, but I know my name's going to be called, I have to be ready for that moment. That's why I was impressive with the night. And it was interesting because you could rely on Shane to play that many minutes, not because of the three-point shooting, even though tonight he made them, but I think there was an idea for Spo about I need more basketball IQ on the floor on the defensive end. I need somebody who is going to be in Danny Green's hip pocket to make sure that he's chased off the line. If it isn't Dwayne Wade doing it, I'm going to trust that Shane's going to stay on point with his assignment. And so it's like if he makes shots, it's, it's a benefit. It's icing on the cake. Tonight, that's a whole lot of icing. Mm -hmm. I mean, Shane was just knocking him, <laughs> knocking him down. <laughs>